Welcome to day one of my 100 day challenge, six minute storytelling. Just as a reminder, every day I'm going to pick one topic from my life and I'm going to stick to it, even if it's giving me a hard time and we'll see how it goes. So I'm not going to do a setup each time, but I just wanted to thank you for joining and I hope you enjoy. So when I was younger, I was, how should we put it, I was a little bit awkward. I wasn't a very touchy-feely person, um, and I was often very quiet. If you knew me, if we, if we were close and we had a bond, then you would get to see my weird side, but it took me a long time to open up. I don't think that has changed too much, but I'm definitely a lot more chill as an adult. So the person that I spent the most time with, I would say, is my mother. So she is Ghanaian, and I was obsessed with our culture. I would sit in front of her and listen to her while she spoke on the phone to friends, um, while she spoke to family, to aunties and uncles in Chi and Ewe, and I felt very connected to my Ghanaian culture. This pushed me to become committed to my studies, and be the stereotypical academic African child that every parent is looking for. <laughs> but when I got to college, I realized people don't dress up for classes. They don't stand up when their professor comes to class. It was a whole different expectation than I had and needless to say, I basically had to learn how to chill out. So this wasn't easy for me. I took things very seriously. And while all of this was going on, another reason why I realized it was very difficult to relax was that I had a little bit of a gap in my identity. You see, my father is Ugandan, and he came to the States when he was nine years old, and although we had met his side of the family, we didn't really have many visits. I would say no more than I could count on one hand when I was a child. When I was a sophomore in college, I was too busy to try and figure out what identity crisis I was going through. My parents had divorced, so I didn't really feel like going home. And I had just gone through a really, really shitty breakup right before spring break, and I didn't have any plans to go anywhere. So one day, one of my more eccentric aunts messaged me and told me that I was welcome to come and stay at her home. So I had not gone to visit my family as an adult and I was nervous, but I needed to get out of New York. So I caught a flight down to Florida and I stayed with my aunt for the first time and the first few days, I was awkward as I am. But I started to warm up more and more. We played with wigs, put on funny dances, and she let me drive even though I don't have a license. So, <laughs> ah, this is hard. <laughs> So, later in the week, she took me to, I'm going to say meet the rest of the family. I knew them, but I didn't know them as an independent adult. I remember my auntie Maggie, she invited me to come and sit next to her in her bedroom. And I sat on the edge of the bed the furthest point away from her. 
And every time we got deeper into the conversation, she noticed that I would loosen up. And she would pat the bed, and without thinking about it, I would move a little bit closer and a little bit closer. That's kind of how I would describe the growth of our relationship. So, this side of the family, although they also grew up in a very strict culture, they were all about hugs and squeezing hands and doing funny dances and things that I really only associated with my siblings and my mother. Because after all, they were family. I just didn't know them yet didn't know their core. But at the end of the day, I was so pleased to find out that they had been part of me all along.